professionally, I'm an occupational therapist and I'm a social worker. And I've been working in the care for more than 40 years now. And at the moment, I work at the Hogewijk. I don't expect you to pronounce it. And that's a facility especially made for people living with an advanced dementia. And the Hogewijk is not only the place I work, it's the place where I learn to think differently. And I'm going to tell you about it. But this is me too. I love to travel and go out abroad and go to Venice and Istanbul and Hong Kong and see how people cope with life. And I like to sit on a terrace in the southern of France and have a glass of wine. That's me too. This is my mother. She has Alzheimer. And it started five years ago. And, well, she's a very special person because she's my mother. And my mother loves to go into the fields and watch birds. And she's a vegetarian. And this is a picture of me having lunch with her. And as you can see, she's having water. And I already had my wine. We are so different people. And that is something that is very important, that we do not forget that. My father died when he was 63. That's my age now. And he died of heart failure. And his death was maybe expected, maybe not. But, well, my mother called me and said, your father died. And I stepped in the car and drove up to my parents' house. And one of the first thoughts I had driving up there was, God bless, he never went to a nursing home. And that is a very strange thought if you're a manager in a nursing home. A disturbing thought. Enough about myself. I want to tell you about how things started for us. Actually, we, the managers of that nursing home, we discussed the fact that we had a nursing home and we offered nursing home care to people and that that product we had, we wouldn't offer to our parents or our neighbors or our friends. And we had those discussions over coffee and then 10 minutes later, we just go on with our work as usual and nothing happened. And one day, our managing director said, when we keep up saying this and going on like usual, nothing will happen. And we are in charge here. And if anybody can change things, that's us. And let's sit down and talk about it. Because look at these figures. Dementia has, is becoming a problem, a bigger problem every year. And actually, I think that there's no one in this audience who's, who doesn't know somebody whose life has been affected by dementia. The Western world and the Asian world sees this problem coming, and it's becoming a very personal problem to us. So the story I'm going to tell you, the story that started in 1992 for us, is something that's still very important to tell. Because I hope that I'll inspire you to think differently about how we can take care of people living with dementia. Because that will last some time. I once was at a conference and the professor that spoke there told me that research is looking for the cure for dementia. But it'll take 30 to 50 years before they have found that cure because dementia and dementia, that's more than a hundred types. Dementia, dementia is even more complicated than cancer. So, 
we sat down on one day and spoke to each other about what we offered people living with an advanced dementia. And we as professionals knew that people with an advanced dementia need a place they understand. Their brain cannot understand what's happening around them, not easily. It confuses them, it scares them, and some people have aggression because they don't understand it. And at some point, they cannot cope at home anymore. At some point, they need professional help. And as I told you, we professionals know that people with dementia need a place they understand. And we, at that time, traditional nursing home, we said to these people, you can't cope at home anymore, we're professionals. Come and live with us, because this will be your home from now. And I don't think they will recognize it as home. Actually, what we were doing is adding confusion. We would say, come and live with us, this is your home now. This is for the rest of your life. And it's confusion. And we were even surprised that people were wanting to go home all the time and asking, where's my house, where's my home, I want to go home. That's what happened. Oh, that's too far. <laughs> um, so we discussed that and we said, people need a place they understand. People need a world they understand. And people need to be part of society as we all like to be. People want a life. That's the right one. People want a life. And people, when they come to live with us with that advanced dementia, they come to live their last years. They all die in our facility. They want a life. And we discussed that. And we said, well, what do people need to live a normal life as usual, the life they've always wanted and they still want? Well, that is that they need a life in a normal house and not in that four-story high concrete nursing home building. And they need a normal house with a living room and a kitchen and a bedroom and bathroom and a place to sit outside, and they need a front door. They can just open themselves and go out and be safe outside too. They can be free. Be free. That's what they need. And they need a house where there's a normal household like they've always known, where their dinners are cooked, the table is set, where you do your shopping daily, because otherwise there's nothing to be cooked. That's what these people need, a normal house and a normal household. And they also need a social life. Thinking about ourselves at home, that's not the only thing we have. We also have a social life. We like to go to the pub to have a drink, we like to go to a concert. We'd like to have coffee with the neighbors, be member of a club, go to the hairdresser. We like to have fun in life. And these people deserve to have fun in life. That's what we discussed. We said, we need to create a place where these people can live a life as usual and live in a normal house they understand and have a normal household and have a social life. And then we started to discuss uh, who, who are these people that live in such a house. We, we, we already said to each other, it shouldn't be a big group. At that time, in 1992, in our traditional nursing home, people lived with 15 or 20 people together in a living room. That's not our culture, but that's what we did. 
And we said it should be a small group of people living together in that house as if they are family. That's our culture. But who are these people? Suppose I say that those first six rows, the first people, tonight you six are going to live in a house together for the rest of your life. Would you like it? I don't know. You, have to, you, you need a lot of luck to find people that you really like to live the rest of your life. I'm living for more than 40 years with a man. <laughs> we fell in love. We still love each other. But you know, you need something else than love to be together for 40 years. We have the same ideas on life, mostly. And that helps, that helps to feel at home. And that's what we discussed, and we said, what people need is actually that they live their last years in that house together with other people that have the same ideas on life. And we called it lifestyle. And later I learned a lot about lifestyle from a research company in the Netherlands called Motifaction. They have a lot of data on lifestyles, and do, they do research on the lifestyles in the Netherlands. And they have a wonderful slide I want to show you. It's about lifestyle. It, these are two people we all know. And you know, they're both male, over 65 years old. Same profession, same income, wonderful people to live together. I bet if these two people knocked on our door of our nursing home asking for a place to live because they both have an advanced dementia, I think it wouldn't be a good idea to put them together. That's lifestyle. That's what's lifestyle about. We think it's very important to have people live with people they share interests, they share ideas in life together, to have a feeling, I belong to these people, we belong to each other, we can live together in this life. Those last years of your life were, well, you live with us because you need our professional help. That should be a good quality of life. That's what we discussed in 1992. And we started in 1993 doing it. We just started. We just started doing it in that four-story high concrete nursing home building. We just started doing it and we learned to think differently. We had to learn to think differently to know what to do. We needed to use our professionalism to offer a normal life, and that's very hard for professionals to do normal. So that's what we learned to do, to think about what do these people need and what can we add because of our knowledge so that it's good, so that they can feel free to do things and feel safe to do things and have a good quality of life those last years of their life. And I think that's important. It's important to my mother. It's important to me. And it's important to everybody because what people need is that they're respected for the person they are. That's what we're looking for, to offer people quality of life, those last years living with a severe dementia. The respect for the person you are. It's about to be or not to be. That's the question for people living with an advanced dementia. Thank you.